power injection. In this hobby of Christmas lighting, there is, gosh, there are a few topics that uh, really get people up in a while, shall we say, um, and power injection is one of them, where there are many, many opinions on how to do power injection. And in this video, I just want to talk in an informative manner, not sharing the way I do it or my opinion too much, but what is power injection? Why do you need it in your Christmas animated pixel light show? And then how, what are the basic nuts and bolts of making it happen? Okay, because I see a lot of people confused about power injection more than any other subject. And while there's some complexity to it, it's really not that bad. Okay, so to get started, uh, the, let's talk about the need for power injection. Why do we need power injection? Why is it a thing? When we run Christmas light type pixels, we're running them at 12 volt or 5 volts. As electricity goes through wires over distance, um, th with thinner wires, this is going to happen quickly, more quickly than with thicker wires, but it happens in every piece of wire, voltage starts to drop. Okay, When we're working here in the US with regular household power that you plug into your wall, you're at 115 volts in a typical American house. Now that could be anywhere from about, you know, 105 if you're really, really rural to about uh, 120 if your, your supply is kind of high. And in a commercial building in the U.S., you could be as high as, you know, I've seen 128, 129 in a commercial building where it was really strong, but usually 120. Okay. When you travel across a distance of wire and you drop 5 volts off of that, generally it's not a problem. If you're at 115, you drop 5, you're at 110. Pretty much any device that's designed to work at 115 volts will take that 110 and it will work. It will be able to operate. Okay? When we're working at 12 volts, we're now at a tenth of the voltage. Which means, along a, a similar length of wire, we're going to lose 5 volts. Well, it probably doesn't take much to realize that when you have something that needs 12 volts to operate, and you give it seven, it's not gonna work. In fact, for most pixels, generally it's around that 11.7, you know, 11.6, 11.5 zone where things stop working, okay? And that's why we need to add power injection, okay? Now, the, the chief causes uh, of voltage getting too low is either when you're looking to add more pixels off of the same port, um, but the power has dropped too low, or you're aiming to have between pixels um, extra length of wire to the point where the voltage drop over that wire starts to add up and you start to have issues, okay? So if that's the problem, then the solution can be injecting more power. It doesn't always have to be, but it can be, okay? So what we grab for ourselves is a power distro board. That's going to be probably the first thing. We're going to need a power supply and a power distro board. Let me grab one. So I've got my Falcon F8, which kind of looks like a smart receiver, but it's got power that comes into it. And then it has eight different outputs. And I've got my good old Meanwell LRS350 power supply. So power injection works one of two ways. The first thing you've got to define with power injection is, are we coming from the same power supply or a different power supply from where this uh, prop, this, these pixels were getting power previously, okay? If it's the kind of situation where you're close to the controller, but you just have a lot of pixels and you just need to re-inject power, but you're still close to your main controller box, then oftentimes your power injection can be from the same power supply. Now, the benefit with that is what you basically can do is double your distance and just add power at the end of your run of pixels, okay? Um, and so maybe you were running 12 volt pixels at 50%, you ran about 150 pixels, now you can run 300 pixels. The key is that at the very end of that, you build yourself a little piece of custom wiring with a, a pigtail or an extension that you, you chopped off. And you bring in from the same power supply, um, if it's not, again, more than um, about 25 feet with power, you 
could go further, but let's not muddy the waters here too much. Um, at the end of that, you just wire in the voltage plus and the voltage negative from your same power supply that's powering the pixels through the controller, and you're good to go, okay? You're great. And the benefit here is that um, that power is going to carry through the whole way. So, you know, it, it's a little bit stronger. Now, if you're not going to be using the same power supply, and this happens a lot with power injection, because you come out of your controller box, you go through a couple snowflakes or some icicles or whatever you've got, and all of a sudden, you know, you're 50 feet that way down your house, and you need to add in more power at this point. At that point is when you grab your power injection board, which you, you used before, you hook your power supply into the input terminals, you hook your pixels up to the output side. But the biggest key here is that at that midpoint, wherever you need to add more power, you want to go ahead and cut the voltage positive. That's the biggest key. Is that whether you're going, say, in the 150 pixel example, maybe you come 150 pixels out of the controller, then at that point you're re-injecting power to go forward another 150. Commonly, a lot of vendors sell power injection T's, which are just a T-shaped connector where all three wires are connected through. There are variations though, okay? And with the power injection T, you simply come going through uh, one pixel string to the other. You want to, right before that T, cut the voltage positive, okay? The 12 volt or five volt line. Then coming um, in from the bottom of that T, you want to cut the data or not have any data connected, which if you're using something like a Falcon F4 that's, you know, or another power distro board, there is no data place for them to plug in. So you just cut it off, leave it hanging. You're good to go. Okay, leave that disconnected. Then that basically means that between all three parts of the T, the negative is connected. Okay, between, um, the, between the power supplies, between the two, the voltage plus is disconnected. And for best results, you do want to go ahead and between your multiple power supplies, you want to run a wire through the voltage negative and connect those together between multiple power supplies as well. Now, that's the part that you can technically get away with not doing sometimes, but other times you get flickering, so don't do it without it, okay? Now, to add more complication to it, um, here we went 150 pixels, we added in more power, then we went another 150, cutting the V plus in the middle. We could go that full 300 and cut the V plus at 150 and just power inject from the backside. Again, that really depends on the location of everything you've got in your display and what works best for you. Um, but at the end of the day, not to poo-poo power, power injection, I use it, you know, in some setups. Um, but ultimately, when it comes down to it for a lot of people, and we'll, we'll talk more about this next week, um, power injection just isn't necessary. It's often almost better to use more smart receivers or just to run less pixels per port with how cheap these controllers keep getting. And it can make your life a lot easier. As you probably found through this video where I went over the basic types of power injection and how they work, um, this stuff isn't that simple, and remembering to set things up right, labeling everything really well, and all of that can really kind of become a nightmare. So, at the end of the day, I'm not a huge power injection person. I do see its needs sometimes, especially if you're working with a large prop, a dense pixel matrix, whatever. Sometimes it makes a lot more sense. Um, especially if you're working with a matrix of pixels or a dense prop, if you can just do one input lead from your power supply, but then branch it off and inject within that prop, then from year to year, when you're bringing that prop out and setting it up, you don't have to figure out how to do the power injection. It's all within it permanently. Um, but anyways, enough rambling. Um, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big like and let me know down below. Um, do you use power injection in your, your display or not? Um, ultimately, more than anything, as we'll talk about next week, um, it's it's more about cost and reliability. And just, you know, for a lot of people these days, I don't recommend doing it. 
But if you want to squeeze every dollar out of your controller, squeeze every pixel possible, then you're not going to do that without some power injection. So if you like this, be sure to subscribe. Like I said, like the video, check down below, and grab my free guide to begin with Christmas lighting. If this is your first time doing this, I've got a guide which are the biggest mistakes I made and I see others make when you're first buying stuff. I want you to buy the right stuff the first time, and in my guide I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Until then, we'll see you guys, and have a Merry Christmas. See ya.